Shepherd family. This year, the youth of our church will once again be participating in the 30-hour famine. Every seven seconds, a child under the age of five dies. Nearly half of those deaths are hunger-related causes. That's why we are taking action now. For 30 hours over the weekend of March 4th and 5th, we will skip meals and raise funds that will help feed and care for hungry children around the world while volunteering to make an impact right here in our own community. And we need our church's support to make our famine weekend a success. Every $40 that we raise helps feed and care for a child for one month. You can make checks out to World Vision and send them to the church office or turn them into the offering basket. If you prefer to give online, you can visit our fundraising page at 30hourfamine.worldvision.org slash team slash 34379. And that'll be here on the screen. Or you can text give 30 hf that's G-I-V-E 30HF, to the number 44888. If you'd like to do more, or if you can't give monetarily at this time, we are in need of adult volunteers for the weekend of the event, whether you're able to stay the whole time or are just available for an hour or two. And of course, we ask for your prayers. Ask for God's grace over our event and our fundraising, and that we can grow deeper in our love for God while helping change the lives of kids who are hungry. Thank you. welcome you to our online service here at Good Shepherd United Methodist Church. We are still fully online as of this Sunday, but I have good news for you. Next Sunday, February 6th, you're going to be invited to come to the sanctuary for prayer and communion during the 10 to 11 o'clock hour where we usually worship. If all goes well, the following Sunday, February 13th, we, we will be back together in our normal worship format. I also want to let you know another bit of good news. This week, we are launching a new app, our very own Good Shepherd app. Now, you might be asking, what is that? Well, that means we're going to be able to put all of our communications in one place simply by you downloading a little app. That we'll put it in one place. Some of you may be thinking, I don't know how to do that. But there are directions in your newsletter today, and our admin, Rebecca Martin, will be here at church next Sunday, February 6th, from 10 to 11 a.m. to help you to know how to do that download. I hope that you will look at it and consider getting this new app is just one more way for us to communicate together. I am so glad that you have come today to be in this time of worship. It is a blessing that you have taken this time.
We now enter into this time of worship. Something so big. We can't hold it. Something so deep. We can't reach it. Yet it beckons. It has many names. God. Love. Truth. Community. God is in all of it. And God draws us here. To feel some light. To dwell on some peace. To experience some love. To, to sing, sing some, some joy. joy. Let us indeed sing together this morning as we worship the living God together.
I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love. King would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor. die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I At a time when troops mass for war in Europe, we pray for peace. At a time when a pandemic surges, we pray for peace. At a time when our nation grapples with its original sin of systemic racism, we pray for peace. At a time when our world faces an existential threat from climate change, we pray for peace. Sometimes when we pray for peace on Sunday morning, we might feel a little bit like those false prophets of old in Jeremiah who said, peace, peace, when there is no peace. But for followers of Jesus, we're not in denial when we pray for God's peace. We see the world exactly as it is, as Jesus did, but we don't turn away. We believe that God will one day restore all things and that we are part of that restoration effort. But in the meantime, as Epiphany people in this season, we also see into the deeper nature of reality. We know that true peace isn't found in the absence of conflict or by escaping all our troubles. True peace is found in the presence of God. So whatever troubles you bring this day, whatever causes you conflict as you enter. Know that God is present with you and offers you shalom. Peace that permeates every inch of existence. Peace that brings us healing and wholeness. Peace that goes beyond anything we can manufacture as human beings. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Good morning, Good Shepherd. Today's scripture lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. The gift of love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a no noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful, arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own ways. It is not irritable or resentful. 
It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, love, abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to hear God's word, would you pray with me? Gracious God, come and be in our midst in these moments as we remind ourselves of the need to apply love, your love, in this world. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, you have been invited to download a new app on your smart device or iPad for our Good Shepherd United Methodist Church community. And I want to invite you to do just that today because it's gonna be a tool to communicate with one another in a whole new way. And in the year 2022, we can use all the communication tools that we can get. Did you know that in the year 2022, there are any number of apps available to you, including those for finding love. 
There are whole dating apps specifically for different categories of people. Uh, for those who are trying to meet a whole lot of people, there's a certain kind of site. And, and, and if you're looking for uh, college age, if you're college age, or if you're a senior, uh, I started getting apps for senior dating. Why are they sending me those? I'm married, first of all, but am I that old? Apparently. There are apps for all of it. But you know, the other thing interesting I found is there are also love apps that allow you to maintain your current love relationships. For example, there's one called Love Nudge that is an app based on the book, The Five Love Languages. Perhaps you've read that. And it gives you detailed prompts about what your partner likes and suggestions or nudges for how to respond to them regularly. One suggestion is that you can write love texts that's the modern day love note for your partner based on what this app tells you they want to hear. <laughs> Maybe after a number of years, we don't need something like this, but kind of an interesting thought, love nudges. Well, Paul writes a love nudge, as it were, in 1 Corinthians 13 to the church at Corinth to help them to understand their relationship with one another and their community and how they can connect more fully. This chapter immediately follows his exhortation to understand the gifts that God has given to them and to all members of the body to be used as a much larger part of the community. We talked about that last week in great detail. At the end of the chapter 12 before the one we've heard today, he finishes by saying this phrase, but earnestly desire the higher gifts and I will show you a more excellent way. Well, what is this excellent way that Paul is talking about that comes from using our God-given spiritual gifts? It is love. It is interesting how this chapter 13 is often referred to as the love chapter. And it is used often in Christian circles as a declaration of love and unity, not so much about community, but about married couples or romantic couples. The last verse is practically an anthem of Christian weddings in the Western world. Love is patient, love is kind. And these three things remain, love, faith, hope. You know, I think it was even on the bookmarks or napkins at Alan and my wedding years ago. But Paul writes 1 Corinthians in response not to a married couple or a couple falling in love, quite to the opposite situation. Paul declares love as the greatest power in community and in community that seems to be lacking a lot of that love. The moment that Paul is writing is a far cry from an adoring couple standing at the altar declaring their unwavering devotion to one another. The members of the Corinthian church to whom chapter 13 is penned, they're nowhere near having a love feast. According to New Testament professor, Dr. Shively Smith, unlike the marriage vow moment, Paul does not introduce this passage to affirm an ethic already present in the community. Paul rather presents this passage as a way to introduce into the community an ethic that is necessary if we are to survive the muddy waters of difference and disagreement that is produced in relationships. The Corinthian church was not a homogeneous body. Its members were not all of the same kind and ilk. This wasn't just a comfortable gathering where people fell in lockstep with each other because they shared the similar values and lives and experiences. It was quite the contrary. The Corinthian fellowship, or we refer to as koinonia, that, that word that is used in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, this koinonia transgressed conventional social boundaries of ethnicity and gender, age, rank, status, and life situation. This fellowship is made up of married and unmarried men and women, widows and children. 
Most of its members are, are converted Gentiles, but it also includes Jews. Some of the Jewish members were rather powerful figures who had served as synagogues leaders, like Crispus. It is a diverse group of people, to be sure. And this diversity within the Church of Corinth generated both benefits and challenges. And that's common for any social group. Unfortunately, the diversity among the Corinthians dissolved into discord. Members divided into contentious groups, you and us and they and them. They took sides with some saying that they are of one teacher or another, or one belief or another. This was a community that was fragmented rather than enriched by their differences. Ultimately, Paul writes to them to remind them that God longs to enrich their community because of, not in spite of, these differences. Let's be clear. Paul's love poem was not a reflection of what was, but rather a call to what could be. This is a love nudge for them to apply the love of God in the situation in which they found themselves. This love in 1 Corinthians 13 was not romantic love, eros. This wasn't ever meant to be read at a wedding and cause people to cry. Rather, it was meant to exhort the early church to uncover a deeper, more excellent way of being in community together. Their gifts were God-given and important, but those gifts could not sustain their community alone. Rather, they had to be applied with the love of God. And the word for love in this passage in the Greek is agape, literally, to love as God loves. Paul outlines for the community at Corinth what that agape of love looks like. And this is the way they are supposed to live with one another and in their community. God's love is patient, kind, not envious or boastful or rude or arrogant. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is how we are to be in community with one another, with those with whom we deeply love and with those with whom we deeply disagree. Our gifts are not enough to sustain the community alone. We have to apply the way of Christ because the way of Jesus is a way of patience and kindness, of not acting out of anger or insistence on our own way, but rather hoping and trusting in what God can do in our midst. To quote Dr. Smith again, Make no mistake, the love Paul is talking about here is not passive and fluffy. The kind of, this kind of love, rather, is an up at dawn, feet on the ground, tools in hand, working kind of love. It builds communities. It nurtures positive social interactions, and not just social networks online or on a phone, which many of us have come to prefer. Paul's declaration of love unifies, even and in spite of differences. Love is the way by which we talk to one another, eat with one another, fellowship with one another, and affirm all of God's people. Love transcends. It transcends our self-imposed caste systems and personal biases. 
Love forms whole and holistic people who are anchored in the well-being of others. I like that last phrase, anchored in the well-being of others. Are you and I and our faith community, are we anchored in the well-being of this community? Is that our reason for being here? Love will not let us down if we genuinely live in it together. For the source of that love is God. I believe that Paul sums it up three chapters later in 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all that you do be done in love. The agape of God. For God so loved the world that God gave Jesus the Christ to be a sign of that love. An unmistakable, unselfish, unyielding love for all people, for all time. God's greatest application of love in the world is Jesus. And that love gets installed, downloaded through the body of Christ, the church. But we have to be willing to share what we have and to invite others to subscribe to the greatest love that they will ever know. The love application. It's here today, available for free. There's no in-app purchases needed. Let's install it and share it, that we might be a community of love, God's agape love in this world. Amen and amen. O oh God of love and justice, we bring to you our joys and concerns this day. We lean upon your loving kindness confident that you hold space for each and every one of these concerns that we lift up now. We lift up the Van Brunt family in the loss of Jim's mom, Janet, and Becky's stepbrother, David. We lift up Linda Flanagan in the loss of her dad, and the funeral will be Wednesday in Delaware. We lift up Tom DeHitra, who is recovering from surgery and is facing ongoing treatment. We lift up Nancy Kane, who is also recovering from surgery. We lift up Kim Spordone, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer and will be having treatments. We lift up Robin Martin, who is also recovering from surgery. And we lift up Jane Barbie in the loss of her husband, Jewel. We lift the family of Pete Triana, a formal Charles, former Charles County teacher who passed away this week. We pray for the nations of Ukraine and Tonga and the instabilities from the threat of war and uh, natural disasters in each place. And for the accident victims in our community, several recent accidents that have claimed lives. And we pray for our students and teachers as the end of a marking period approaches. And we especially want to lift up our School of the Week Gwynn Center, where Kim Spardone is a teacher, and we want to continue to pray for all those impacted by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that they will soon come when we may view each other with unveiled faces and be together. But in the meantime, we pray to do what's necessary to endure. And now if you would please take a moment to add your own prayers to this list. And now would you pray with me? O oh Lord, may your love be like gentle rain upon our thirsty souls. May it permeate us in our hearts of stone, breaking us down and bringing us fully alive. May we be a wholehearted people who embody the qualities of love we have considered this day. For we may have many things in our midst, but if we lack love, we lack much. Justice, they say, is applied love. 
So help us turn our words of love into concrete acts of justice in our community and in our world. May our church community be a place of shalom that offers your love and justice to all. We pray all of this in the name of the Trinity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we spend this time thinking about what God is calling us to give to the work of God, I want to let you know that through our new app here at Good Shepherd, there is an opportunity for you to give. This will ultimately replace our current online giving system. We're, we're still going to be using both, just so you know. But I want you to try it out as you get this new app. You're able to give through this new app, either through debit or credit setup as you would on any other online purchase, or by going ahead and setting up your online routing number with your checking account. It is your choice. But we hope that you will test it out and see how this works, along with all the other features of this new Good Shepherd Church app that is now available this week. I do also want to remind you that our Wattenford Scholarship Fund is our offering for the month as we want to support our seniors as they graduate this coming year. Will you pray with me? Oh, holy God, thank you for the many ways that you have blessed us. Your abundance has been placed in our hands that we might share it with others. Let us now be faithful, Lord God, to offer ourselves as you lead us to. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Okay, good shepherd. I'm Doug Casto. I am your trustees uh, chairperson. First, I want to take the time to thank you and the support that you give this beautiful church of ours. Without you, the trustees would not be able to accomplish all the tasks and all the work that we've been able to do in the last two years or in the years past. Who is on your trustees committee board? That would be Becky Weevil, Brian Cook, Jeff Ford, Michael Blizzard, Mike Carr, <clears throat> Phil Day, Pastor Lori, and our new education center director, Cindy Baker. Our committee is open to all church members. Um, you can either come and join a meeting or you can actually become a, a trustee member yourself. So please come join us. The trustees is responsible for ensuring that day-to-day -day operations are completed and the maintenance of the building is uh, taken care of. Um, we ensure that the physical property and the grounds are well maintained and do all the repairs or see the repairs are done. Uh, this includes uh, the day-to-day -day bills, or the month-to-month -month bills, our electric bill, our gas bill, trash and recycling, uh, water and sewage, the phone and the internet, and our janitorial services and, and our new sanitation procedures. The most uh, dynamic part of being a trustee is uh, coming in and finding out what has broken or what needs to be fixed. Uh, these are the planned and unplanned events that we have to get taken care of. In the year 2020, your trustees have been able to accomplish the following. The Education Center roof replacement. So now all our angled roofs um, have been replaced and should be good for the next 10 to 15 years. What needs help is our flat roofs. Our flat roofs still need to be replaced. And right now, we are repairing them as we need them. Uh, last, in 2020, we repaired rooms three and four and five, seven, the janitorial closet, and the uh, roof over the Education Center Secretary's office. We repaired two HVAC units. The kitchen stove ventilation is a uh, annual process. Ensure that the, the grease is cleaned from the uh, ventilation ducts. 
Uh, the church ground cleanups. We try to do a couple of those a year, and uh, we're looking to do one in the spring. We also had a new picnic table installed, uh, a new locking snail mail, snail mail mailbox. Church ductwork was cleaned, replaced the education center ceiling tiles with new ceiling tiles, and the one ceiling tiles that were still good and reusable, we have repurposed to use throughout the rest of the church. Restroom repairs. There's always restroom repairs. Uh, this includes toilets, sinks, urinals, faucets. That was in 2020, 2021, and I'm sure in 2022 we'll have um, restroom repairs to do also. In the year 2021, your trustees was able to accomplish the following things. Snow removal in February 21, February of 2021. Repair four HVAC units and then install new thermostats. Uh, roof and gutter cleanup day. Replace burnt out light bulbs in the sanctuary. Uh, repair the flat roof leak in the ladies restroom next to the sanctuary. Repair the flat roof leak and install new drains over rooms three and four. Uh, repair the leak to the ter uh, church steeple. The church grounds and the flower bed island had a, a cleanup day. Uh, replaced the ceiling tiles in the education center offices and our front offices. The kitchen stove ventilation and the kitchen refrigerators were uh, maintenance. And our ice machine had quit working. And we replaced the ice machine with a new or a new donated ice machine. Uh, our computers was, we had new external hard drives installed on them. And the parlor conference room was, had new equipment added to it in order to do Zoom meetings. And this is for Bible studies or committee meetings or any type of Zoom meeting that we can do remotely and in person. So far in the year 2022, and we're only a month in, we've had a snow removal and we've already had to repair one HVAC unit. Other important accomplishments, our place soup kitchen serving 130 to 160 guests per evening uh, twice a week. Our tech team equipment, we was able to purchase a new audio video mixer, new camera, repurposed an uh, old laptop, cabling and some extras. This was able to provide us with our virtual online service for tapings for our Sunday services, and was able to do a couple of simple live stream uh, funerals. We still need some additional equipment in order to produce a uh, quality live stream and some sound equipment to help out with that. Our COVID response. 5,000 cloth masks was obtained from a government program special sanitation procedures to include electrostatic spray service and medical quality sanitation wipes. A new handheld electrostatic sprayer or mister was also bought so we could do some of our own spraying and was able to get a cart to display all of our sanitation procedures or all of our sanitation items. On the horizon and coming to a Good Shepherd Church near you, last fall we started up our uh, Building Grace campaign. This is to cover some of our big ticket items, uh, which includes our nine HVAC units that need replaced, our flat roof that needs replaced, the church steeple which needs repainted, our par parking lot repairs, uh, line painting, and or maybe the replacement of the asphalt. Replacing our church sign out front has been in the hands of the United Methodist men, and we're close to having a new sign. The Garden Club Fellowship. This is a fellowship to help take care of our flower beds and our flower bed island and some of the grounds around the church. Our newest initiative is the Crisis Response Task Force, which is headed up by Joanne Olson. Um, this is in charge of getting some of our AED equipment, 
uh, first aid and CPR training. And this is not a one person uh, responsibility. This is a whole church community responsibility. Taking care of one another is what each one of us should be doing. Uh, the more people we have on this committee, on this response task force, it will make life a lot better and safer for everybody. And the last thing I'd like to mention, if the committee, the trustees committee is not a committee for you, or you've been on committees before, I thank you for your service. And now it might be time to look into doing another committee, something you haven't done before. Um, all our committees could use an extra hand. So again, from the bottom of my heart, Good Shepherd Church, I thank you for all that you have done to help support the trustees. Um, if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. And again, thank you. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. Never gives up on me. higher than the mountains that I face and is stronger than the power of the grave it's constant in the trial and the change this one thing remains this one thing Thank you for taking the time to come and to worship with us this day. 
It's a blessing that you have chosen this time with us. I do want to remind you to go ahead and investigate how to get our new app. The instructions are in our newsletter and on our website. It's pretty simple. If you normally have gotten an app, you can go to whatever app store your phone supports and download that and begin to use it. We'll be giving you more information in the next few weeks about how we're going to specifically use this to communicate in some new and exciting ways. Receive now this benediction as we go forward. May we go in grace and peace to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to touch a broken world. May we go in grace and peace to love the world on behalf of Jesus, to represent him to a broken world. May we go in grace and peace to discover the joy of joining the work of Jesus, finding him among the broken of this world. May we go in God's grace and go in God's peace. Thanks be to God.